Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's video. A few tips on how to deal with bolstering since the week that's coming up in World of Warcraft is actually going to be fortified bolstering. And bolstering turns out to be one of the worst affixes this season, mainly because of the dungeon design. So I'm going to go through all of the dungeons right now and give you some tips for each of the dungeons on how you can actually handle this affix a little bit better. So let's jump into MDT and start straight away. The first dungeon that we're going to be looking at is Everbloom. And uh, over here, there's actually a lot of mobs that you need to be aware of, which could basically kill you if they get bolstered. Starting with the Stingers, which uh, come in between and inside of the packs. The small petals here, they actually do bolster. So when you do a big pull, those could actually get bolstered to uh, infinity. And if they jump with the Sting on somebody, they could one-shot them. So if you pull these, make sure to focus them down. Do not pull two or more of them at the same time because uh, if they get bolstered, the two of them get bolstered, there, there's going to be even more problems in those pulls. And then the other thing to note in this dungeon is that second area before the second boss where you have the Berserkers and you have the Dominations. Now, there's many routes that could go here to the side and then skip to the, the boss straight away. If you can do these, make sure you utilize that tag in this dungeon because you want to pull as little as of these as possible. If the uh, dominations get bolstered when they do their big AoE for the whole uh, group, they're going to just nail down people and kill them. And then the berserkers are obviously jumping on uh, people and if they get bolstered, they can also one shot you. So uh, make sure to skip as many of these as you can and if you cannot, Try to pull them in small packs, uh, two together, three together, uh, etc. So that you can actually uh, prevent them from uh, one-shotting you. And if they end up uh, getting bolstered, keep in mind that you can track when they're jumping. And you can try to stun them mid there, use Ring of Peace, other things like that to prevent them from killing people. Alright, so that's it for Everbloom. I don't think that uh, last area has uh, a lot uh, a lot of troubles. Obviously, try not to bolster the Pyromancer with pulling too many of the small uh, guys around him. And you should be good there. Moving on to Waycrest Manor. There's actually a few things to note here. First, the random witches that uh, spawn uh, around... Which, which could be either Rune Reavers or Soul Charmers. If they're Soul Charmers, be very aware of their Edge ability, which is a channel on a person that you cannot interrupt. It's very um, damaging. It's very hard hitting on Fortified, even if they're not bolstered. But if you pull other mobs on top of them and you bolster them, then uh, you, you're going to just, they're, they're just going to be one shotting people. So be very aware how you pull these. Try to pull them separately, not into uh, too big, big of a groups. And if they turn out to be soul charmers, be very aware, be ready to heal up the people who get the edge. Use externals, uh, defensives on them, etc. So they could survive it as they keep spamming this ability. The other problem with Waycrest Manor is the yard area where the small doggies, the jagged hounds, uh, bolster. So try to pull as many of these separately. And then definitely do not pull a big pack on top of the mini boss with the hounds because if you bolster them, it's gonna just uh, one shot your tank eventually. Um, so this is probably the most uh, dangerous area here. Just try to pull, pull, pull the dog separately and then do small pulls around here so you don't get a big bolster stacks. The rest of dungeon, I guess, uh, considering the mini boss uh, in the basement, uh, is also something to be uh, aware of. Uh, which is this one, the Matron Alma. Uh, try to either not pull it, because you can skip it um, on Fortified, or if you pull it, make sure you're not pulling those two mobs uh, or more mobs uh, on top of it, and you should be totally fine. All right, moving to Throne of the Tides, which is one of the other problematic dungeons, because these small doggies at the start, uh, the Snapdragons, they bolster, and they die relatively quickly compared to everything else. So uh, be aware when you pull those, uh, be aware that there's going to be bolster stacks on the rest of the mobs and maybe as, as well try to do a little bit smaller pulls when you know that they're coming along. Going to the rest of the dungeon, if you go to the uh, shaman boss, keep in mind that those small minions, they also bolster. So uh, when you do a pull with them, try to be a small pack. You can probably pull those on top of your faceless watchers as we usually do before, uh, just before the boss. 
uh, but keep in mind that you're going to bolster this uh, very high and they can one shot your tank even if you're dodging the uh, pull in. And then the other important area here are the tainted sentries on the other side before the last boss. Try to pull those separately without any uh, guild goblins with them because the guild goblins are obviously going to die much faster. And once you bolster the sentries and they start doing their swell AOE, you're just going to die because usually they have a few stacks from the uh, other smallies here that give them the shadow uh, damage debuff. So make sure that those are pulled separately here and here. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be in a big, big trouble. <coughs> okay, excuse me. So, uh, moving on to the next dungeon, Ataldazar. Ataldazar is generally not that bad, especially if you don't pull that middle pack that you want to dodge uh, in fortified weeks. Anyway, you have to be aware of two things. One is the Juggernauts, if you go to the left, uh, if they get bolstered, although they have relatively the same amount of health as the mobs around them but if they get bolstered and they start jumping around they're gonna be one-shotting people so uh make sure you are cleaving them down equally with everything else because usually you, you focus down the uh, augurs but in this case you probably want to focus down the juggernauts and just interrupt uh the augurs and then if you go into the right side be very careful with the reanimated honor guards because uh, they have much higher health than everything else. And until you kill the totem, you cannot actually damage them anyway. So uh, focus them down and try to pull these into smaller packs or avoid them altogether. Um, obviously, if you're going right side, you have to kill a few of those. But if you go to the left side, you can skip everything. You can even skip the pack before Volkow if you CC them up on the left. And then just, uh, you know walk bypass it very carefully without pulling the group but again if you pull these be very careful and be prepared for a lot of AoE damage once they get bolstered overall <coughs> sorry Ataldazar is not one of the bad dungeons okay moving to uh black crew coat uh the first thing to be aware of here is uh the mini bosses at the start they can easily get bolstered so be careful with those I usually want to separate this not to be one big pool, but do a smaller pool uh, at the start and then do the mini bosses. And then uh, the other big thing here is the uh, rat, rat guards after the second boss. Uh, the small scavengers here, the tricksters, they actually bolster. So be careful how you pull these. You don't want to bolster these to infinity because they're just going to uh, one shot your tank uh, potentially. Um, and I think that's it for uh, Black Rook Cold. Uh, the, the, the area after the stairs with the boulders, um, the bats here, the small bats that are actually not even uh, on this chart because they don't give percentage, uh, they do not bolster, so that's great news. They could get bolstered, so be careful if you pull all the fellow sprite uh, dominators together and you kill some of them, they can bolster the bats and then if they cast sick bats on somebody, they can kill you. But other than that, it's not that bad of a dungeon. The rest of the mobs here usually have uh, relatively... Uh, the same amount of health pools, so you should be able to cleave them down together uh, without much problem. Moving on to Dark Card Ticket, obviously the bears here are very important. If you do the first pool and you pull the bear with the first pool, make sure you focus this down, make sure you have a lot of priority damage so it dies together with everything else. If you don't, uh, you can probably just uh, do a pool without the bear and then pull the bear separately, that's also totally fine. Uh, but this is probably the most dangerous mobs uh, in this dungeon when it comes to uh, bolstering. Then in the area after the first boss, be very careful because the blossoms here also bolster. And usually what happens in the runs is tanks just chain pull these. But uh, they kill the dryad and then they chain pull to the next and then chain pull to the next etc. Now the keepers do heal the, the blossoms right but usually you don't want to chain pull because uh, if you kill something low and you bolster the whole pack. Just go slow here. It's uh, not going to be that scary to do just a few more pulls than usual. And wait a little bit before the Blossoms die, uh, pulling them into the next uh, pack. And uh, I think that's uh, that's fine. The, the rest here has um, a relatively the same health pool, so you shouldn't have much problems. But surviving the first part in Dark Heart Ticket is going to be very important this week. Because the bolstering could do a lot of damage uh, over there. Moving on to Galakron's Fall. This is actually not a bad dungeon at all. The only scary part is the beginning where you have the Epoch Reapers. Those are the bigger mobs that uh, jump on somebody and start spinning. Pretty much like uh, the Berserkers in Everbloom. Be very careful with those because their health pool is much higher than the rest. So um, if you do a big pool at the start as we usually do. 
uh, then be very, very careful either to focus these down or be prepared for when they're about to jump. You can even start pre-moving. So if they jump on you, they don't want to shot you. Um, and um, Or you can just do separate pulls. That's also totally fine because the timer in pull is quite lenient. Uh, so you won't have much problem with that. But again, this is probably the most scary part with the Reapers. Um, the rest has uh, either equal health pulls. There's Reapers at the end as well, right? Just before the, the last boss. If you're pulling these, because sometimes we skip this pack. Be very careful. Uh, the rest you should be able to handle. There's some inconvenient mobs in the second area around the second boss. Uh, but there's not much you can do here. Uh, just try to prior damage, for example, the uh, call last time. Because if you buff them and then they do the big circles around people, they can one-shot you. Uh, but over one of the not-so-bad dungeons in boss rank. And then uh, our favorite Murazon Tries dungeon. Uh, there's actually a lot going on here. So the first area apparently has the mini bosses. You have to be very careful not to bolster them. So try to do smaller pulls here. Uh, you can probably bolster the uh, the, the Valo, the timekeeper, uh, right? Because he doesn't do much. He does the big dome and that's it. Uh, but if you bolster the other two, they're probably going to uh, kill you and one shot you. The uh, Maiden especially does a lot of AoE damage. So you definitely want to pull that separately and not bolster it at all. And then uh, the, the Lizard guy is also very dangerous. So be very, very careful in that uh, first uh, first area. Luckily, in the sand area, there is not... Uh, the, the mobs here do not bolster, so that's going to be a relative lazy. And then I guess the other scary part is just before last boss, this is this big pool uh, with a lot of AoE because you have the uh, Marauders and the Dragon on top of them. Uh, now, this is fortified, so this is probably going to be the hardest pool in the dungeon. We are usually focusing down one of these mobs and killing it, but now... Uh, when once you kill it, it's going to bolster the rest of the mobs. And usually you're popping all of your CDs and defensives at the start to survive the initial AoE from everything. And then once there's, let's say, only the dragon left, you're chilling because you can heal through the AoE. Well, in this case, the dragon is probably going to have two stacks of bolstering. So be prepared for a very tough time in this pack. Uh, but uh, obviously you can use lust and everything for it. Uh, but unfortunately, you cannot skip it. So this is where you're going to have the most problems in uh, Morrison Tries. Right, so hopefully that helps you. Uh, you can, you need to adjust some of the routes. And uh, you need to focus down some of the mobs with higher health pools. But uh, other than that, you should be a uh, week where you can push some keys waiting for the next uh, patch to come. Let me know if you have any other tricks or any other uh, mobs that you're scared of with bolstering in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, bye-bye, take care, and get out of here.